Hello and welcome to this tutorial on uh, speed ramping. We're going to look at two different clips. The first one is of people waiting in a line. What we did was uh, outside of an event we shot the entire line. And then what we want to do is show the beginning of the line at regular speed and then ramp up and show the entire line in fast forward so that it looks awesome. So let's take a look at the beginning. Now here we are going down the line and right about here what we want to do is speed up the footage to about a thousand percent. The old-fashioned way to do this, if you started in Final Cut 7, what you would normally do is uh, cut the footage where you want it to speed up, select the second clip, and command J to open up your speed duration window. And then you'd move this to 1000% or let's go, uh, let's go straight to 2000%, why not? And there it is. Regular speed. Kablamo! Super fast speed. Awesome. There's the whole line. It's kind of making me dizzy. Alright, that's the old-fashioned way to do it, but that's not how we're going to do it today. We're going to do it the new-fashioned way, because we are on the cusp of all trends. So what we're going to do is select our footage, and if you go over to your track information area, and you scroll, you can grow it or shrink it as you need. We need it grown so that we can be doing adjustments to these uh, keyframeable lines. The default one is the opacity slider. And if you bring it down to zero, your footage is invisible. If you put it at 50, it's half transparent, half solid. And if you keep it at 100, it is completely solid. By striking the P button, you'll bring up your pen tool and you can add keyframes with your pen. What we can do is keyframe from full 100% opacity down to 0% opacity. This is good for creating a fade out if you don't want to use their plug-in uh, cross dissolve filt uh, transitions. So that's the basics of keyframing within the timeline, but we're not keyframing opacity. What we want to do is right click on this FX drop and go to time remapping and click speed. Now what you'll see is there's a line dead center. And what this line represents is the speed of your footage. Right now it's playing back at 100%. We can grab this line and take it down to 25%. And you'll see now it's running in slow motion. Or we can take this slider and we can drag it all the way up to 1000%. And you'll see now it's playing very fast. All right. What we want to do is a little more complicated than that. We want to do keyframes. So we bring back our pen tool, click a keyframe, click a keyframe, and right in here we can bring this up to 1000%. Now what you're seeing, as I drag it up, the second keyframe will get closer to the first keyframe. This is because your footage is playing back faster, so everything will kind of move to the left of your timeline. If you go below into the purple zone, you're going into slow motion, so everything will move slower and your clip becomes longer. We want to go faster, so we're going to drag it up to, let's go straight to a thousand, why not? And let's play that back. It will not play back smoothly because we're not rendering. Well, actually, let's go ahead and render. Alright, let's take a look at that. It starts out regular, and kablam, it zooms up to very, very fast, and then it goes back down to slow. Okay. Not bad, but we can do better. You'll notice that when we add a keyframe on opacity, it's just a little dot. But when we added those keyframes on the speed remapping, we had these little arrows that were split down the middle. These can be dragged apart to create uh, a ramp. And this is really cool. This is very, very useful. We go from fast and then it ramps down to slow at a normal pace. We're going to do one over here. Keep that up there. Let's render that and take a look at how it looks. All right, let's take a look at that. So what we are going to see now is uh, regular speed, ramp up 
to fast motion, a little bit of fast motion, and then go back down to regular speed. Not bad at all. You can go even one better. You'll see that there are these little handles on the ramp, and you can make it very smooth. And you can do that over here as well. Which is nice, but not particularly essential. I mean, it, it makes the footage look better, so why not use it if you know that it's there? But let's go over a couple other things. What you'll notice is if we start to fiddle with these different settings here, it'll have an effect on the rest of the timeline. For example, this is playing back at 1000% speed. If we were to drag this down, what you're seeing happen is the clip gets longer because it's not playing back as fast as it does here. This gets pushed. This adjusts a little, but this will stay exactly where it is. Are you seeing how that works? This is really neat. It's very, very organic when you're doing it. It's very easy to understand as you interact with the footage what's happening, but it's very difficult to explain. So I encourage you to grab some footage and play around with this and see what kinds of effects it has on your timeline. You'll see as I drag this to the right, we have more footage playing back at high speed, so our clip becomes shorter. If I drag it to the left, we have less footage playing back at high speed, so the clip becomes longer. As Doc Brown admonished Marty many, many times, you have to think fourth dimensionally, and that is absolutely true as we do speed ramps in footage. So that's the basics of speed ramps. Let's get a little bit more complicated. We're going to look at some footage that was shot at 96p and then conformed to 24p. So that means that the footage will be playing back in slow motion. What it is is a glide cam walk around of the Hulk fighting the Hulkbuster at the Avengers 200% event in Rapungi. What we want to do is start on the Hulk, play that back in slow motion. We're going to start about there. We'll play the opening in slow motion. Then we will speed up the middle and play the end of the shot in slow motion. So we'll go to about there. All right, let's get into it. We're going to add, well, first switch over to time remapping speed mode, add a keyframe where we want it to speed up, goes all the way around, and we're going to add another keyframe there. Do just a bit of ramping, not too much, we don't need a lot. And we're going to jack this up to 1000%. And there we are. We'll render that and then take a look at it. Slow motion, fast forward, slow motion. Now that was a little disappointing. Because the footage is slow motion, even going up to a thousand percent speed doesn't look that fast. It's really just a little bit faster than the speed it was actually recorded at. So what we need to do is be able to go above a thousand percent. And you'll notice if you drag this, you can't go above a thousand percent. So what we need to do is sort of trick the system a bit. So what you'll see over here is that this is uh, 23.976, that's 24p, you've got your drop frame as usual. Right click on the footage and go to Modify, Interpret Footage. And what you'll see is the Use the Frame Rate from File, 23.9760. What we want to do is assume this frame rate and we're going to go to 239.76. So we're speeding up the footage. We're going 10 times faster. This will not affect the core file. This is just how Premiere reads the footage, how it interprets the data that's in the footage. So we're going 10 times faster, 239.76 frames per second. Click OK. Now we're at 239.76, and we drag this back into our timeline. We want to keep existing settings because if we change them now it will be a 270 239 frames per second timeline we do need to go back in and clear the clear the in and out and then just drag and drop this in there keep existing settings okie dokie and now you'll see 
it's playing back in fast forward even though we haven't done any time remapping. There's our walk around and we're going to finish around there. That's fine. Let's go into our time remapping speed and the first thing we want to do is take this and drag it down to 10%. So what we did was we made the foot we made Premiere think the footage was 10 times faster than it actually was and now we're telling Premiere to play back that footage at one-tenth the speed of 10 times what it was originally filmed at. So essentially what we're doing is speeding it up over here and then slowing it down over here so that we can speed it up even more over here. You'll see now we're back at 24p. We're 96 shooting, 24p playback will yield slow motion like this footage. And what we want to do is speed up the middle part. So we've got that, add a keyframe, give it just a little bit of, um, of ramping, and we'll go to the end, add another keyframe, give that a little bit of ramping as well, and the section in the middle, we're just gonna blast that to 1000. We've gotta zoom in a bit, and let's render that and see what it looks like. Slow motion, wow. That was a little too fast. Now you'll see that a thousand percent is just a hair too fast. Let's take that down to 700 and see how that goes. That's better. So that is how you use um, slow motion footage and speed ramping to get cool techno-y, future vibey editing very, very easily, very efficiently, and only with a little bit of hack work. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this helps you make more and better movies. Good luck with it.